Hello everyone, I'm Esperanza Walsh and this is Art from the Heart, St. Augustine Church. And uh, we're doing our session remotely uh, due to the lockdown because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, we are still painting a flamenco dancer. Previously, we painted this one. And today we will be painting this one on my left. Okay, are we ready? Let's start. So we are doing this one, and to begin, we have to do our sketch, which is done by using this guideline. So basic sh uh, shapes, a few tri uh, triangles, circles, and some lines, and uh, we shall start. So let me just get the pencil. We start with an inverted triangle. There we go. Then a circle. The circle will be marking the hips of our dancer. And then another triangle here. Oops, it doesn't matter. It, uh, it's okay if it's not a perfect uh, triangle. But what's important, this is the basic slant of that shape. And then here, you will do another triangle, a bigger one. And there we go. Now we draw the neck, then the head, and then the arms. I think my arm is too short. The upper arm is too short. So let me just make it longer. Oh, there we go. And then that's the hand. Okay. We're not going to paint any details on the hand. So it's um, going to be a little bit abstract, but uh, we are going to do um, image of a flamenco dancer in some sort of an impressionist way. Okay, let me just see if the proportion of the head is good enough. No, I think the head I have is too small. So here, I would need to add an extra bit for the hair. And then let me just draw some a little bit of space here so this is what i drew this space that later on the gap in between will be left white okay now the bun okay perfect shall we start drawing the actual figure so this is our guideline and from our guideline what we do first is to connect this shapes using curved lines. Okay, there we go. That's the arm. Now for the elbow, let me just round that a little bit. Here another curve, another curve, another curve. It's just connecting it using curved line, making this elbow a little bit more curved, then connecting this, and then Connecting the body to the hip and then connecting that to the lower part of the press. And then here, we connect this with a curve inside the object. So in, unlike the other side, which is outside here, the curve is inside the two triangles. So we remove the lowest line uh, on the biggest triangle. And then we will erase everything inside the new shape that we have created. So all the guidelines, which we do not need, which we don't need anymore, we will be erasing them. Okay. Okay, let me just draw that again. Oops. Let me see. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. Now, the next step would be to paint the body. Uh, by that, I mean the upper body oops, and the face with burnt sienna. Okay, I would need to lift that and make sure my, my brush is clean for this round. Okay, so now I'm just going to paint it with water. Upper body, arms, face, neck. Um, after doing that, it's time for burnt sienna. 
Okay, we'll do that now. Okay, beautiful. Arms, hand. Again, if there's any excess paint, we just lift that. Fantastic. Okay. Yes, it's uneven, so we have to lift some part of it. Yes, there we go. That's great. Perfect. Now, we will paint the rest of the body with water. And now we will paint it with red underpaint. Red under paint. Perfect. Okay. Now we are going to paint the sleeves using red under paint. We'll paint it with water first, then very light uh, red paint. Okay, perfect. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Okay, fantastic. And then again, a little bit of that red paint. Oh, beautiful. Okay, now I will paint the neckline, which is that the uh, deep scoop neck, more of a wide view. Okay, and then I'm going to paint the rest of it with water. Perfect. So now we have marked the neckline, um, the whole dress. Ah, okay. Now here, I am going to paint a certain area here with black paint. Let me show you why. Okay, because the shape of this dress has, um, the front of the dress is higher than the back. So there's this um, long trail at the back, but in front, it has this um, ruffles, but uh, higher than at the back. Okay, so we will paint this area black. And why did I immediately say we'll paint it black? Why didn't I think of putting the legs here or anything like that? Because in my mind, I'm already thinking that the light is coming from the top. So for this one, the light is coming from the top. So what we see at the bottom would be the shadow. So that is why it is black. Now, let me just paint the some parts of the arms and the face with the burnt umber. That's for the shadow. Okay, then we just spread that with water. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing to the other arm. Okay, so we have here. Burnt umber and then we're going to paint this with water. Just to soften the gradient. Okay. Oh, beautiful. She's beautiful. Okay, now we do the neck. Also with burnt umber. And some water, of course, to make it look softer. Perfect. And now we're going to paint part of the face.
and then soften that with water. Again, at the end of this uh, activity, you can either decide to uh, paint the details of the face or to leave it as it is. So it's up to you. Yes, because just similar to the previous activity, where we have uh, the dancer without details of the face and the dancer with details on its face. So again, as I was saying, it is up to you. But don't forget to put the shadow because that would give it um, some sort of uh, dimension. And of course the direction, because as a dancer, it should have movement. Okay, next thing is I am going to put the um, lemon yellow on the breast to make it lighter and on part of the hip. There we go. And then I am going to soften this with just water. Okay, and then similar to that, I'm going to do the same with the sleeve, put some lines or dots in lemon yellow. To add dimension to the sleeves. Again, use water to soften that so that it looks more natural and part of the sleeve. There we go. And then we are going to do the same thing to the skirt, so. Oops, I think that's too much. So let's distribute that evenly. Okay, now soften it with water. Oops. Fantastic. Okay, now I would need to mark um, that particular area where the raffles uh, meet the rest of the dress with red. Okay, let me get some more of that. Okay, so we have okay, the raffles here starting to have dimensions, which is very good. And distress as well. We need to give it some dimension. So some part of it should be darker than others. Okay, so we're painting the edges a coat of red. Which we will be spreading with water. Okay, fantastic. We're making that more even. And we're going to do something similar to the sleeves. So for the sleeves, we're going to draw a red line here. We're going to paint the red line. And then small red lines here. 
and then just paint it with water to spread them to spread the paint softly But because we painted it with ye lemon yellow earlier, it now looks as if there's some sort of dimension on it. Okay, so small lines. And again, spread it using water. Perfect. Okay, we're actually almost done. So now let's do the hair while we allow the rest of it to dry. So the hair is black, but be mindful of what I told you earlier that we have to leave the gap here. Okay. Yes, we're doing very well. There we go. There's that small, uh, thin gap there. That would make it look more realistic. And then now we do the bun. Okay, she has a big bun. She probably has long hair. Oh wow, she's beautiful. I love her hair. Okay, now we add further dimensions by doing something similar to the red paint using burnt umber this time. So by that I mean painting lines here in burnt umber. There we go. And then smaller lines from it. Now there we go. And then painting that with water. So we paint that with water. So what it creates is um, the dimensions, deeper dimensions because of the darkness of the brown, but not too dark. And then now we paint Burnt umber on the side of the dress as well. Also here. And here, not because of the shadow, but rather uh, the shape. So it's like cylindrical. So this bit looks like it's further from the center. And oops, that's not part of it. Okay, so here we paint this with burnt umber as well. And here. And then we soften this like that. Perfect. And then a little bit of black here. Now this is for the shadow. And then here, Okay, and this is the shadow as well. Okay. Okay, I need to put some black highlights here to balance it. Oh, 
Okay, now we have effect B1. We still have to finish up the sleeve. And again, it's similar to how we did the red paint. So again, that's water spreading it there. And then on the other side, again, burnt umber. And then we have water. We just need to spread that a little bit. Oh, fantastic. So this is our second flamingo dancer. Again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can uh, opt to paint the features of the face or you can leave it as it is. But the important thing here is that we have captured the movement, the grace in the movement of this dancer. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much and looking forward to see you again next time.